this is so long overdue. And we're just really, really uh, happy to be able to do this, and we're happy that you guys were able to, to come. We appreciate everybody that came today. Um, and uh, we just wanted to be able to, to not quite have this formal, a funeral kind of thing, and more of a celebration of, of Gaga's life. She was a super amazing lady, and she touched a lot of people's lives. And, I'm not crying, you guys are crying. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> and, uh, she lived in an amazing life. She touched a lot of people in an amazing way. And she was my mom, so of course she was the most amazing person I knew. She was for me too. But we wanted everybody to be able to get a chance to, to come and talk about that or so that it's not a super fancy microphone. Oh. My favorite memory. There's such a huge she was an amazing, like, she was a super sweet mom, and I was a, a tender, sweet little boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still Dude, okay. Alan is choking on his. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I think probably my favorite, um, I have, there are a lot of things. The things that jump to mind is the things that she did for people, the things that she, she was, uh, First, to recognize somebody that had any kind of, um, pardon me, <laughs> um, any kind of need, deficit, or anything. She saw that before anybody else saw that, and she scooped up that person in their, her big arms, and she was amazing that way. And, and so I have all these memories of, of watching that play out, watching her um, do that for kids, and for me, and for my brothers, and um, when I think back on my mom and, and the way that she lived her life and, and who she was, I think that's the thing that sticks out to me the most. Is the thing that I want to emulate the most is this, uh, this need to make people feel really good and to make people not feel um, sad or incomplete or uh, shy. Or, you know, she was amazing that way. And uh, so, yeah. And there were a lot of birthday parties. So, I had a birthday in the summertime, so she went <laughs> embarrassingly over the top on most of my birthdays growing up. Giant, the whole backyard would be transformed into a crazy sea. <laughs> Alan, you were the guy paying for all that stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> um, speaking of teacher voice, uh, I teach, and my mom taught, and uh, I've actually, you know, Usually you want your parents to stay out of your business, and I don't have to do my job. But I learned kind of the hard way that um, being nice to students, uh, rather than being a strict disciplinarian, uh, actually connecting with kids and getting relationships. I learned that from my mom by teaching in a school my mom taught the year after my mom taught there. And I could see like the relationships she had built, and she would talk to me about the, the students. And uh, that was my first year of teaching. And uh, I learned it kind of quick, and I've used it. You know, here I'm about 20 years later uh, teaching with it. But her using humor in the classroom is something that I've taken with me, and humor in life too, like all the photoshopped pictures and stuff. Um, <laughs> I kind of got in trouble in high school making old school cup and paste photos of people. So <laughs> thanks, mom. Um, but, <laughs> but I know you all have different uh, fun, you know, like Photoshop pi <laughs> uh, picture memories or some sort of, hey, she taught you to laugh, or she taught you to do something. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Photoshop, I told this last night, this might embarrass my dad, I don't know. Um, but I remember I was uh, maybe six-ish, I don't know, but man, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit thing was a cool, cool thing to get in the mail. Um, and uh, my mom decided that those young ladies were not modest enough, so she, she merged it with uh, J.C. Penney's catalog, and the only way you can with 1986 technology. So she cut out individual outfits for every model <laughs> and ruined my poor father's copy of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit <laughs> model. And he ain't making that up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, and I kind of messed up and, and ruined one of her James Taylor tapes. I think I told the story last night. She was a big fan of comedy. She loved Mystery Science Theater. Uh, she loved an old show called Mad Movies where they would dub over things. Yeah. And 
I thought that was cool. So me and a young man named Cody Vandruff, actually, <laughs> whose parents are here, um, I convinced him that it would be really cool to recreate a Mad Movies um, on this James Taylor tape. So when James Taylor would say things, we would respond to James Taylor as Mr. T. Uh, so <laughs> Cody and I did our best uh, Mr. T impersonations, and James would tell us he'd see fire and rain, and we'd say, you haven't seen anything, fool! And we, yeah. <laughs> We thought we sounded awesome, but like six and seven year old Cody and me probably didn't sound that great. <laughs> and we were actually recording over her real James Taylor tape. Oh, so, no. um, yeah, she, but I, I think she was really mad, but I think she also found the humor in it. And uh, it was, it was kind of like the same thing. So I'm going to sit down and let I'm, I'm now Hannah. <laughs> I spent a lot of time figuring out what I wanted to say, how I wanted to tell the world how much she meant to me. I could fill the pages of an entire narrative detailing the differences she made in my life. The impact she had on the lives of those that knew her is a never-ending gift. She was a fantastic teacher. She taught my sister and I things we never learned in school. She was unashamed to be herself and be weird, and she taught me that being weird is wonderful. She brought smiles with her everywhere. I feel her love in the recipes I cook every day. I feel her knowledge. I feel her in the knowledge I've amassed and can now pass on to younger generations. I hear her in the musicals I know because of her. The week she passed, I remember waking up with a song stuck in my head that I remember thinking to myself, Grandma's letting me know she is okay. Um, life wasn't very kind to her, still she did her best and she loved fiercely. Her love transcended great distances, and now that she is gone, it transcends the now and every moment, I can feel the love she is sending to me. So wherever you are out there, just know that I'm loving you fiercely, and I can only hope to change the world in the ways that you did. Love your little dumb wings. <laughs> Hi, for Hannah. <laughs> Not for me. I'm Adam's wife. Alice was my mother-in-law, but she was my dear friend, I think, which is more important, sorry, but I, <laughs> I couldn't have been luckier to have been such close friends with my mother-in-law and my kid's grandmother. Like, I loved our relationship. And I'm pretty sure she loved it. <laughs> but I wanted, I, I put together this slideshow with help from lots of people and email photos, and, but I spent a lot of time, Connie and I together, on Facebook, going way back, like as far as we could. I went through that, her page so many times. And I think my big takeaway is how much she loved her grandchildren. She loved you guys too, of course. She was, <laughs> but she loved her grandchildren. And she was effusive. Like she was so proud of everything you did, the moments you were born, and all of your accomplishments. When you graduated, there's so many people who graduated. Like every dance thing, like every Lego set. Like it was, she loved her grandchildren and she lived for you. So, um, yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that as I went through again and again, I was really moved by her love for all of these. And they were in gangs up and down that street. Well, I did good to have my boys in the house, and the four, my, my oldest wanted a duck and a snake. So he told me, he came home, he said, I have a duck and a snake. It's just living at... Jeff's house. <laughs> and I thought, oh, yay, I want her to live with me forever. <laughs> I don't want that stuff. But it was always okay. We walked up and down the street, and he'd point out the duck. And I thought, I'm so glad it's at her house. <laughs> and then the boys were all wrestling, and uh, Benji, Benji will always be Benji to me. He was just a little guy, maybe four or five. And one of the older ones got hurt at a wrestling match, so Alice said, I'm going to take him and go somewhere. Glenn, do you bring Benji home? Well, thinking of a little, I thought, okay. And so Benji came in and said, well, where's my mom? I said, well, she had to go. He was thinking there were going to be fireworks, and he just looked at me very calmly and said, well, can you take me home now? <laughs> oh, my God. She, that is the mother that she was. They were just, what? Well, they were very, uh, adaptable <laughs> and always fun. 
she kept me laughing through some really rough times. And um, I, she was just a special person to me. You know, at a time when I didn't know how to be a mother, she surely did help me. <laughs> just go straight back to what Adam said. When we were in junior high, I was the biggest goober that ever lived. <laughs> and she and Connie O'Brien were just like queens. Yeah. And I would follow <laughs> goober. I would follow them to the bathroom just to hear what they were talking about. <laughs> and so Alice took it upon herself to teach me how to fix my hair. Because <laughs> her hair, you've seen those pictures, oh my god. Yeah. Perfect hair. We hated her. She had perfect hair. <laughs> and so then I lost, we kind of lost track and jump ahead, you know, 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we became really close friends, long distance. We talked on the phone all the time. Um, we texted, and everything you said is so true. She absolutely loves everyone in this room. And Jessica, you say it's her grandkids. I've heard her brag about everybody in this room. And I feel like I know you all. I do too. And, and Connie, she was so happy to get married. And she relived all of that to me on the phone about how exciting it was and how wonderful it was. And she felt so lucky. But um, even in her darkest times, Alice would make jokes. And you all probably are aware of that. She'd been in the hospital for, like, it seemed like a month. And I kept sending messages and no reply, no reply, no reply. And one day, I got a cartoon of a lady climbing out of a window <laughs> on sheets, climbing down like a you know, ten-story building. And she said, I'm on my way to Sonic. <laughs> so never, never fear that you weren't loved. You were all loved tremendously. She's a great lady. And that's why we're here. Marsha and I loved her so much. Thank you for being here. Well, we had a psychic connection. And, of course, it was a humorous one, knowing her. But when we lived, both lived in married student housing at, in Edmond, we used to sit out on a blanket, just, I'm not even sure why it wasn't sunbathing, just sitting out there talking. And we'd play cards, and we tried to tell each other what card we had with our minds. <laughs> <laughs> so we were sitting there one day, and she handed me, um, I mean, I drew, a, it was a diamond, I think, a red diamond. And I, was, I closed my eyes to try to send it to her, to let her know. And we'd missed several already. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Dang, I can't do it, Alice. And she said, is it a red diamond? And I said, yeah, but it keeps turning into a heart in my mind. And she said, it is in my mind, too. I don't think I can tell that. Adam said he told, she told him about several crazy things we had going like that. But one time when she, before she got too sick, she uh, went to a garage sale or something like that. And the lady there came out as, she, as Alice was leaving and said, I think you may not get through it. <laughs> I think you're supposed to have this. I don't know why. And she gave her a coin. It was like a St. Christopher, but some other odd saint. I mean, not odd, but you know. <laughs> 
And so she gave it to her and said, you're supposed to have it. Alice put it on Facebook that, that what had happened, the story. Well, if that, my son Mitch over there wanted that coin because it was mine, and I don't know where I got it, but I had it for quite some time. It was in my car, and he said any time he drove my car, he always played with that coin. He said, don't ever get rid of that. I want it if you don't want it. And I said, well, take it, and it wasn't there. So I texted Alice, and I said, this is worse than a card, so get ready for this. <laughs> she said, what? And I said, that coin is mine. We believed it. <laughs> um, just some of, one of my favorite memories from Grandma Alice. I'm her oldest granddaughter. I realized I didn't use it myself the first time I was up here. <laughs> anyway, um, so she did my sister and I to many musicals, so many musicals, most of them from before 1970. Um, so Bye Bye Birdie um, was one of West Side Story, obviously. Bye Bye Birdie was one that my mom, I think, wished she hadn't shown us, <laughs> but it was fine. <laughs> but um, West Side Story we watched all the time, like all the time. Um, and eventually we watched it enough that we started like dressing up for it. Um, and we had a joke, uh, the guy who plays Tony, his teeth are so, so white in this, in this film. Um, so we would start putting... Uh, like printer paper on our teeth to like. And then there's this one line in um, oh god, is it? I don't remember which song it is, but uh, I think it's tonight. Anyway, there's this one line um, where Anita says we're gonna mix it tonight, and I always thought she was saying we're gonna make some tuna. <laughs> which is always, always with our white paper, white teeth, we would sing with the West Side Story, we're going to make some tuna. <laughs> and I just, I, I love that she embraced that uh, and, just, and didn't correct me and she was like, of course that's the line. <laughs> we're, we're making tuna, it's West Side Story. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, I feel like that is a, a really great encapsulation. My whole experience with her is my grandmother. Just embraced all the silliness and was even more silly um, than we could be. <laughs> and I was just, I loved her so much for that. <laughs> and I did cry. It was fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, that's me. Yeah. All the people that I've met today that have been our friends for years and years, as soon as you said your name, it's like, oh, I know. <laughs> I know about you. And she talked about you. And she tried to stay strong for her boys, for her grandbabies, and for all of you. And it just got to the point where she couldn't get it. But she died peacefully. You can all be happy about that. She just kind of sighed and she was gone. And now she's up there saying, why are you guys crying? <laughs> and, uh, and she's coming back as Amy's. Coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she's also going to be. We're also going to see if uh, this helps that animal kid <laughs> be, so, be so attuned to what time it is. Alice Wise had all these yeah. little idio idiosyncrasies. 11-11 Yes. Two or three, four or five times a day. He'll look at his clock and it will be. I can show you my phone. I can show you all the text messages. And, and she's true. done that for since she passed. 44. It's happened every, every day. <laughs> and now it's happening with his. So she wants them to be aware. So Adam is, we, we all said a parent saying we're going to make this our goodbye. It, let me know that we're all good in your good. Cancer, and I was grieving over it, and Alice sent me an email about her experience with near death, 
and I can't, I wish I could read it to you because she was eloquent and I'm not. But she said uh, in surgery, so there was a complication and she was above herself. She could see everything that was going on. And I'm like, oh, she said she didn't have any worry in the world and that now she knew that there was nothing to fear and that people that have gone on before us are hot happier than we can imagine. And I, every time I have someone who's grieving, I make sure they see that because it, it had a big impact in my life. Thank you. You did such an amazing job taking care of my mom. Thank, thank you. you so much. Like, I'll never be able to thank you enough for what you did for her for years and years and years of a fight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jewels in your crown when you get there. Play a guitar and sing songs. She'd make requests. And that, that, that was one of the very last things she did yeah. for her. You I also read A bunch of people posted on Facebook as yeah. former students and just wanted to say their lies and I got to read those to her. read all of those to her. Oh. Yes. Yeah, several of you here responded yeah. to that. She heard all of them. She absolutely was responsive yeah. to those, all those. It was probably the most touching moment of my life. <laughs> she had a lot of people that were really touched by her life and, and to be able to say thanks before she left was really cool, I thought, you know. At the wake, talked about the essence of Joe being in the room. That was a very interesting concept to me. But as someone has already said, the essence of Alice is in this room. She has touched each and every person in here in some way, at some time, somehow. And that's what these type of events are all about. She will live on forever. Uh, you can be with her every day if you want to be. Uh, I'm sure most of you have been for the last two years. And uh, I, did, I did not know Alice well. Uh, I knew her, and I knew that she was special, uh, but I really didn't know her. But I can feel her in this room right now. And uh, for anybody that uh, uh, doesn't feel real spiritual and all that, if you can't feel it right now, you're just numb. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that, because... Uh, her presence, God's presence, is in this room. Since I was younger, and one involves, again, dude I grew up with, Cody Vandruff, whose parents are here. Um, <laughs> the the Vandruffs. So this, and this goes back to what Glenda was saying when she said that, that she took care of all kids in the neighborhood. So here she took me and Cody to a movie. It was a terrible movie, but we wanted to see it. <laughs> ice pirates. I mean, what seven-year-old wouldn't want to see ice pirates? So it sounds awesome. Uh, it was not marketed towards seven-year-olds. It was very <laughs> racy and kind of raunchy at bits and whatnot. And it was kind of ramping up to getting inappropriate. <laughs> so you could, she, she told this story many times. Um, she was like, oh, did I make a mistake bringing the neighbor child and my son here? <laughs> so at one point it got too much. She panicked. She took her coat, threw it over both <laughs> Cody and I, and we sat there. She always told the story. She was just remarkable about how we just sat there politely <laughs> on both of our heads until she could escort us out and like, the scene stopped and she was like, maybe we'll pick another movie another time. And we, we left. But she would tell me that story all the time uh, <laughs> and then remark how we were just sitting um, Similarly, uh, she, this does not involve Toby directly, um, but the same neighborhood. Um, I wrote a letter to Santa and I wanted Castle Grayskull. I thought it looked really cool. Uh, I wrote a letter and Santa replied that uh, that was a really scary looking castle. <laughs> and that his elves were just a little too freaked out to put it on the sled. <laughs> but, um, well then this dude named Jordan McAuliffe gets Castle Grayskull right down the street 
delivered by Santa and his elves. So I wrote back to Santa. <laughs> Much crap. That was the worst word I knew at the time. And he, ah, just raging. Um, so I don't know. I was like seven or something. Well, fast forward to when I'm 29 and I'm at work, and uh, they come into my classroom and say, "Hey, we just got a package for you uh, at Central Office." I was like, "I'll oh, bring it up." Was well, this large Castle Grace skull shaped box comes into my room? <laughs> And on the shipping label is Santa Claus. <laughs> so uh, she had gone on eBay and she had convinced the guy selling Castle Grayskull to write a letter as Santa. <laughs> so he wrote, hey, I found this on my sleigh. And like this guy ate it up and got real into it. Uh, and like, did this real thing and everything. So I'm like, what am I going to do with Castle Grayskull at like 29? But I finally got Castle Grayskull. I found it. And she went on eBay and got it for me. Oh. And uh, she yeah. did to work like 22 years later. <laughs> I actually gave it to a friend of mine who collects He Man <laughs> because I learned to pass things on to those to, to, to give enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. You did not learn that from your mother. <laughs> I'm pretending that I did. <laughs> um, My mom was a keeper of things. <laughs> yeah, so I did learn that. Um, and then one last thing, you know, she, I don't know if she taught me this or just agreed that she felt like uh, pre-made things and box made things were like bad. Like, like if you bought a cake at IGA, there was just something wrong to her. She would feel like, if she bought a cake and brought it, she would apologize 90 times because she would feel like, I'm so sorry, I got this pre-made cake for you. It would have to be made. And no box. box. If she used a box, she's like, I'm sorry, I used a box. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I've got that curse now, too, where I have to, my wife's always saying, why does everything have to be from scratch? And I was like, but I learned. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I just made this awesome from scratch meal for you, but my, my wife's coming. So, I apologize. Uh, so, I now do my kids' cakes every year. I do both of them. Some of you see the pictures online, but... Um, Stay up way too late because I procrastinate, but I make two cakes a year uh, because of Gaga. So I try to spread that on. And the person who appreciates those cakes is here, hopefully, right? <laughs> You're shaking your head. So you like those cakes? <laughs> okay, good. All right, I'm gonna stop. Now it's babysitting, and I think you had a lot of questions about you know the baby in my belly. So we told you it was very basic. We love each other. And you know, very, she's four, it's very basic information. But Alice didn't know that. I think she assumed we were such liberal, progressive, I don't know what yes, she thought. Yes, she, so she um, told Izzy, through your probing, I'm quite sure, let's just say how natural childbirth actually happens. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I won't go into any more details, but you know what I mean. So we come home from her and we walk in and is he sitting on the couch, like wide eyed, like you're just like staring at us? And Alice just had her head. Like, Sorry, I'm gonna go now. So that's when she, yeah, she, she told you the whole thing. <laughs> Gaga! Gaga!